Metformin is the most used medication for diabetes worldwide. On every continent, the number one medication is metformin. But why is this? In this video, I'm going to talk about the benefits, risks, functions, everything about metformin. I have divided it into 12 topics to make the video easier to understand. And the first topic is why is metformin the first choice when each patient is different? Many people have asked this because it's one of the things I discuss on this channel. Everyone has individualized treatment. Some circumstances will work better for one patient than another, but metformin is generally the chosen medication. So why is that? We have statistical studies that show the likelihood of a medication being successful, and usually that chance is higher with metformin. We know this through comparison studies. So for example, metformin versus glebenclamide. We know that generally metformin has a higher chance and also better safety than glibenclamide, but that's re-evaluated with treatment. So it doesn't mean everyone is going to have to take metformin, but by the protocols, it's the first choice because of the statistical chance and the safety. So that's fact number one. But everyone is unique. Everyone will have a formula that'll work. Fact number two about metformin. Also a big misconception I hear on a daily basis. I also read here in the comments that you all talk about how a medication so cheap and so old, some people even say that, is going to be so good. How is metformin going to be better than a drug that's a thousand times, that's right, a thousand times more expensive than metformin and a drug that's much more modern? We'll comment on those two points here in this topic number two. First about the price. Metformin has already undergone a process known as patent infringement. The laboratory that produced the metformin which conducted the research no longer holds the patent to be the only laboratory to produce this medicine. It causes the price to drop because other laboratories also have access to the formula, which doesn't happen with some medications that are much more expensive and only one laboratory is authorized to produce. That's why the price of metformin is so low. This is a positive factor. You don't have to be suspicious. How can I take a medicine that is so cheap? So don't have this perception that isn't the correct way to think. You have to be happy. Look, what a good thing. Such a good medicine for such a low price. Regarding time, it's also another positive factor. Why? With metformin, the oldest drug, we already know its safety profile. We already know about the side effects, the adverse effects, who can use it and who can't. We already have that documentation. So the fact that metformin is an older substance is also a positive factor. You might think that a medication being old and cheap could be a negative factor, but it's actually a very positive factor. I hope this has cleared up any confusion about metformin. Number three is about the side effects, the negative effects of metformin. What are the most common side effects? Intestinal issues such as bloating, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. We can reduce these effects if you take metformin after meals. So. That's why my doctor recommends taking metformin after lunch, for instance. It's to minimize your gastrointestinal side effects. Another way to lessen these effects is to use the extended release tablet. In this way, these effects are reduced and even eliminated. A lot of people say they don't feel anything. Do you use metformin? Write in the comments if you feel anything or other rarer effects. Some people also report increased itching, nail changes but it's a small portion of people. Tell me what happened to you. Also write which part of the world you're speaking from. I want to know which city you're watching this video from. I want to know where this video is reaching. Fact number four, and this one is very important and also overlooked. Metformin can interfere with the absorption of vitamin B. Metformin is a risk factor for vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 is so important because it plays a role in the reproduction of our cells of our DNA, which is fundamental for the central nervous system. So pay close attention. If you take metformin or know someone who does, it is important to let them know. Share this video with that person because of the crucial role of vitamin B. There is a significant rise in vitamin B12 deficiency across the population. Many people show severe symptoms of deficiency and a lot of them take metformin. Point number five is about spotting the pill in your stool. It can be frightening for many, and some even stop the medication if they lack the necessary information. If you are on metformin, 
It is possible that certain types of tablets or capsules may appear in your stool, but it does not mean that metformin is not being absorbed by your body. To the contrary, your body is making use of metformin, but some components of the pill or capsule don't get digested and show up in the stool. So if you notice the pill in your stool, although it can be uncomfortable, it doesn't pose any threat to your health or diabetes management. Another indication is that you are taking metformin. The number six is another myth about metformin. Many people are unsure whether metformin makes you lose weight or if it makes you gain weight. Metformin has a neutral effect on weight. Generally, we've analyzed many people, thousands and thousands who use metformin, and it has a neutral effect on weight. Does that mean you won't see any change? No, it means that on average it won't change. But some people report that they lost weight after starting metformin, while others report that they gained weight. But generally, it has a neutral effect. Also write down what happened in your case. Did you lose weight? Indeed, metformin should not be used for weight control or weight loss. It doesn't work in those cases. Why? Because metformin doesn't have a pronounced effect on weight, as I explained. There's an individual factor which we are aware of, but it's not useful. It's not worth it. Taking metformin just for weight loss isn't justified. Fact number seven is about how metformin works. Metformin has two functions that I want to spotlight. Firstly, it acts on the liver. Metformin can potentially lower the liver's glucose sugar production. We refer to this as hepatic glucose production. So it enters the liver and lowers the amount of sugar that the liver is producing, which is quite intriguing. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. The other function, which is more discussed and known, is that metformin boosts insulin sensitivity. One of the major issues with diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, is insulin resistance. The patient does have insulin, they have the insulin hormone, but the hormone can't function. It can't take the sugar from the blood and bring it into the tissues, into the muscles. With metformin, the patient is able to make better use of the insulin he already has, so it acts on insulin resistance. It's these two fundamental points of metformin that you should understand. Number eight is about contraindications. There are some patients who cannot use metformin, and I'm going to highlight two groups here. The first group is patients who have weak kidneys, kidney failure, especially when these kidneys are functioning at less than 30%. In such cases, metformin is contraindicated. The second situation, also a contraindication, is a patient who is suffering from a more severe inflammation of the liver. We can also call it liver failure. When liver enzymes, when that liver is very much swollen and is being injured, they are greatly increased. In many situations, the doctor may contraindicate the use of metformin. Oh, but I have liver fat, and yet the doctor prescribed metformin. Is it safe? Yes. In most cases, who has liver fat can also use metformin. There is no problem. I'm talking here about a deficiency, a more severe alteration in the liver. Also is a contraindication. Through the exams, the doctor can know if the patient can or cannot use metformin. I'll leave an addendum here also. If you're going to do any test with rotated contrast, like a CT scan, you must inform them beforehand because it can interfere and lead to a serious medical condition, lactic acidosis. So whenever you're about to do an imaging test, say, hey, I use metformin, can I use this contrast? The staff will then be prepared to tell you how to proceed, okay? But there can be this interference and we want to avoid that due to the risk of lactic acidosis. The number nine is also an internet myth. Claiming metformin can create resistance in the body and over time, you'll need a larger dose of metformin. That's not true either. Metformin doesn't have that effect. It doesn't develop tolerance that leads to the necessity of taking larger doses. That doesn't happen. What happens is that many people only take metformin and don't make the necessary lifestyle adjustments, hence the natural progression of the disease diabetes. You don't reverse the risk factors. You don't make lifestyle modifications. As time goes by over the years, the trend is for the disease to progress, and then you will have to take a higher dose of medications.
That's why I always talk about changes here. I'll talk more about that later as well, but metformin doesn't have that resistance effect. So if the doctor prescribed it to you, don't worry. See in this video, I am reassuring you more, so it already deserves a like. I didn't set a like goal for this video. There are 12 facts, so let's set a goal of 12,000 likes. It helps me because this way the video gets distributed and there are many people who need this information. It's also a way to help the channel. Number 10, can metformin excessively decrease blood sugar? If you're taking medication to lower blood sugar levels, is there a risk of hyperglycemia? No, metformin is a safe medication. It does not cause hyperglycemia because it does not work by increasing insulin production as in the case of glyclamide, glyclozide, for example. The last two mentioned medicines do indeed carry a risk of lowering too much, but not metformin. Metformin is a safe drug that increases the sensitivity, as I explained, to insulin, but it will not cause hypoglycemia. It does not have this effect. If you use insulin, for instance, or other medications, then yes, due to the other medications, hypoglycemia can occur. But in monotherapy, what is that? People who only use metformin don't have increased frequency of hypoglycemia. Fact number 11, widely spread on the internet. Some people even worry about the news of metformin and cancer. Metformin doesn't cause cancer. Again, rest assured, metformin is a great drug. And on the contrary, there are some research studies that try to associate the use of metformin with the reduction of some types of cancer. Look, it's an old medication and it still has functions that we can't quite understand. You see, a medication with multiple functions, metformin then has this potential action. It's not confirmed. It doesn't have strong scientific evidence. It can act on cancer but there are ongoing studies. When these studies are published, I'll discuss them on the channel. One more reason for you to follow me to stay updated about metformin and cancer, okay? But it doesn't cause cancer. It has this other objective side that I explained. And the number 12 is metformin and prediabetes. Could metformin be used or should it be used for prediabetes? Does metformin work in preventing diabetes? No, metformin does not work in preventing diabetes. It should be used for treatment. It's different. I know there are some videos saying that, that, that metformin prevents diabetes, but this is not true. And now for prediabetes, some people say, oh, I have prediabetes and the doctor prescribed. Oh, but I have it and the doctor didn't prescribe me. So what's the truth? Let's talk about it. First, do you know what prediabetes is? Prediabetes is when fasting blood sugar is between 100 and 125. Hemoglobin is elevated between 5.7 and 6.4. And in the oral glucose tolerance test, which is that test where you collect a blood test and blood sugar, take glucose, and after two hours, you do another test. This test, after two hours, between 140 and 199, is a value of prediabetes. To answer that question, I'll cite a study that was compared. It took people with prediabetes and observed what was best to do at this stage. And the answer was that patients that have prediabetes that are in this range, they should make lifestyle modifications, diet, and physical exercise. I will speak better on what you have to do, but I want to answer this question. So diet, physical exercise is superior to metformin. In some cases, if the patient is refractory, these measures, then the doctor can prescribe metformin, but it is not the first choice in prediabetes. Ah, uh, but what are these measures? I already made a video with 12 tips for people with diabetes or prediabetes with scientific proof, and will indicate for you to watch it now here. If you click, you will arrive at the video with tips for improving diabetes and prediabetes, besides obviously consulting with your doctor. Hug until next time.